Hello, my name is Alex Aprigliano and I work at Anova Systems as an application engineer. In the following video we will see how SOLIDWORKS is used in the furniture industry. SOLIDWORKS is now widely used in this industry. It's ideal for creating bespoke designs and producing all the manufacturing information. If changes need to be made to the design, as they often do, you can quickly and easily make these changes in SOLIDWORKS and have all the manufacturing information update accurately and quickly too. In the following example, we will build a furniture cabinet based on one of your designs. Please note that I have increased the speed of the video at certain points because there is repetition in the tools that we use. We begin our design by creating planes. For the time being, you can think of planes as invisible sheets of paper ready for us to sketch on, although they do have many other uses. Plane one represents the top of my cabinet. We can then use simple sketching tools to create 2D sketches on the planes that we have created. Now our sketches are defined, we can use the structural member tool to send predefined weldment profiles along the length of the lines. The weldment profiles are typically still sections, but can be customised to any extrusion profile. The profiles I'm using here I've taken directly from the drawings that were supplied. These extrusions will also be available in any future designs. Notice how the structural members trim themselves to each other where they meet. Where we have different structural members overlapping, we can use powerful trim tools to trim them against each other. For the 2D sketch profiles we have drawn in the graphics area, we can use those for many features including extruding, cutting, revolving, lofting, sweeping. Uh, in this example, we're going to extrude the profile that I've drawn. We simply type in the depth value that we want to extrude to. End conditions for the extrude allow me to build intelligence into my model. I can extrude up to surface, up to vertex, or simply a, a blind value. In this example, I've chosen up to surface. Therefore, if I increase the height of my first plane, the side panel will increase in height too. There are many pattern tools available for us to use where we have repetition within our design. In this case, I'm going to use the mirror command. Applied features such as fillets and chamfers can be used to remove the sharp edges and improve the overall look of the design. Because we use the structural member command, the system has automatically created a cut list for us. The cut list includes lengths, cut angles and descriptions for each structural member that's used. It will also collate identical bodies allowing us to work out quantities. You may have noticed that some of the cut list items do not have description or length values associated with them. These are the bodies that were created using standard extrude commands. For these items we use a tool called Create Bounding Box. This fits a cuboid around the body and returns back thickness, width and length dimensions, then collates them into a description for us automatically ready to use in the drawing. It's important to note here that if we decide to change the model, we might choose to change the size of the model for example, then the values in the cut list will automatically update for us. Before we move on to the manufacturing drawing, the last thing that we need to do here 
is add materials to our part. We have a large material library to choose from. You can also add custom materials to this library too. A material can be added to the entire part or individual bodies within that part. After applying our materials, we can calculate accurate weight values and center of gravity. Also, the model looks correct visually. I'm now going to create a new 2D drawing. All of the views are created for us automatically. We just need to drag and drop them into our drawing sheet. Dimensions and annotations can be added to our drawing very easily, or they can be imported in directly from the model. Other view types are available too. Here I'm using section views and detail views. We can also create views of the individual bodies that make up our design. On sheet 3 I import in an isometric view. I then import the cut list directly from the model. The cut list contains the manufacturing information. I can add additional columns to this, such as material. Finally I use the auto balloon tool to balloon my items. It's worth noting that should I choose to change the order of the items in my cut list, my balloons will update automatically. Moving on, we have a drawer pack. We've created this as a separate assembly because we may choose to use it in another design. We also have different configurations of this design representing the different sizes available. Configurations are very easily created. We'll now bring the components together in the assembly environment. We use mates to constrain the components to each other. Additional instances of the same component can be brought in along with its constraints. It's very easy to change the configuration of the component once you have inserted it. Various pattern tools are available to us at assembly level too. Here I'm going to use the mirror command to mirror my draw packs. Now that the design is complete, we may wish to provide the customer visuals of how the design looks. Currently we have two tools that allow us to produce photorealistic renderings. These are PhotoView 360, which sits inside the SolidWorks software, and the newly released SolidWorks Visualize, which is a separate program. Both programs come with SolidWorks Professional. In this example, we use PhotoView 360. We use a preview window to get an understanding of how the design is going to look once rendered. Before we create our final render, we may choose to change our camera angle relative to the model, appearances on the model, scenes, and also lighting setups within those scenes. Once you are happy with how the preview looks, hit the final render button to create your high resolution image. Finally, we finish off with an assembly drawing. So here's one that I've already created. Similar to earlier, you will see that I can create orthographic views, section views, detail views, and many other view types. Notice also that we have various annotations on those views, such as dimensions and notes, as well as a bill of materials complete with balloons on the final page. 
So that brings us to the end of this demonstration. I hope you've enjoyed the content and can see the benefits of using SOLIDWORKS. Please feel free to contact us if you require any further information. Thank you for watching. Thank you.